Hello, everybody, and welcome to Money Matters. If you like to make money, learn about crypto and other investment topics, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the content, then hit that like button as well. Let's get going. As usual, this channel is devoted to your financial freedom. And as a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, nor do I give financial or investment advice. If you need such advice, please seek the help of an accredited financial advisor. Let's take a look at the market. Well, we can see that Bitcoin has started to eke its way back up. I think that we should see a slow but sure churn back up to about 58 or higher, 60 maybe. Uh, Ethereum's taken a breather. It's still hanging right around 3,500. Again, I think at one point in time, it's going to to top out in this current cycle, not the yearly cycle, but this current run at about 45 to 5,000. We could be seeing that over the next couple of weeks. But the big news today was the detachment of altcoins. Oh, Lordy, they went up. A lot of them went up. Some of the top dogs were EOS. They're up 44%. And I think this is on a, a total of seven days or something like that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, 56%, Dash, 40%, uh, OMG, 36%, and that's just scratching the surface. So it seems as though alt season may be here. Let's take a look at the news. A couple of things. Uh, this one was interesting. Uh, I, it's not a surprise, but it was interesting. Uh, it was announced today that Grayscale Investments is going to be the, uh, the official digital currency asset management partner of the New York Giants. Uh, this is the first of many, or first of all, I'm certain that there'll be uh, similar type situations that pop up for a lot of major sporting events or sporting leagues, I'm sorry. And uh, what this means for Bitcoin adoption or crypto adoption across the board is is nothing but good things because fans see that these, these players are getting their salaries in crypto. They're talking about it all the time. Stadiums are being named after different crypto companies. It's only a matter of time until that impacts the, the adoption rate of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So it's a great it's a great thing to happen. And piggybacking off of that, uh, Mastercard did a survey, and this I thought this was kind of interesting too. Um, Forty percent of the people who surveyed out of about sixteen thousand um, said that they plan to use crypto within a year. Seventy seven percent of those surveyed were millennials. And of those, they said that they were very interested in learning more about it. Now I've read different studies on millennials in particular, and the adoption rate is much higher amongst them. I'm not really sure if there's some sort of a detachment in some surveys that they're doing or what groups of people that they're talking to, but um, everything that I've read said that younger people, of course, it seems are very uh, open to it and uh, are much more likely to buy into it than um, like baby boomers or something like that. That's where the ETFs come in for adoption. If there's um, some sort of a gateway or road roadway for folks to get into crypto in a more traditional manner, that's what they're gonna be looking for. This was very interesting. Uh, apparently New York State has uh, put forth legislation to put a moratorium on crypto mining in the entire state pending a three-year environmental impact study. Hmm. So I think I think it's Texas is like begging people to come mine in their state and states like New York are banning it <laughs> for environmental studies. Even though the science says that there is no uh, harsh impact as a result of, of mining. So um, again, California and New York, um, love to visit there, would never live there, but um, uh, just, I think some people are missing the point here and uh, going down the entire wrong route. Okay, here's the here's here's where we get into the meat of it. It does seem like altcoin is taking off. I mean, alt, alt season is taking off. Um, I've looked at all of all the coins that I possibly could over the day, and everything was just it, it was exciting. I, I've I've been on the phone. It's just been amazing to watch. Let's look at some of the reasons that this may or may not be happening. May probably. Um, Bitcoin dominance, we've talked about this before in other videos, has dropped below 50%. It's hanging right around 44%, which is amazing. That's I think it, it dro it's dropped from 73% down to 44% since the beginning of the year. 
the whole crypto market valuation is about uh, 2.43 trillion. So that's way up. Um, and of course, if the dominance is, is shifting from Bitcoin, it's going someplace else. So not only is there more money pouring into the entire market, but there's way more money pouring into um, Ethereum and altcoins. Ethereum has started to slow down a little bit, which is to be expected if you really think about it. It's had a pretty much a parabolic run here over the last couple of weeks. And um, it's not surprising that we wouldn't sit in a consolidation phase for a little while and then work our way back back up. It really kind of depends on where the money is going. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video too. An interesting point here to bring up as well that we'll be talking about is the fact that Bitcoin, although it's been dropping down, popping back up, dropping back down, it seems to be finding support and moving its price back up. And we'll touch on that again too. And if you look at the chart to the right here, this is Bitcoin Cash, and you can see the gigantic green candle to the right. Um, a lot of the altcoins have charts that look like this today. Um, beautiful. It was just absolutely beautiful. But let's look at what it all means. This is the money flow for crypto diagram. This is not my diagram. Um, I was actually watching another program, and they referred to this fella on Twitter, Bitcoin underscore BTC. And it took me a while to find it because there's a lot of banned Twitter accounts that have something to do with Bitcoin. I'm not really sure why, but anyway, I finally found it. And uh, it's not his chart. He got it from this, uh, I can't, Rec Capital or something like that. But what I want to do is to, to show you this chart. This is no secret. Everybody's, I mean, this is logic, really. It's, it's somebody just wrote it down. I might make a, a cooler looking one for myself, but... If you think about it, the cycle starts with fiat or currency, dollar bills, yen, Deutschmarks, whatever. And people buy typically Bitcoin. So they go into Bitcoin and they'll, they'll put their money in. And just like at the beginning of the cycle, Bitcoin was on a monster climb. It, it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. But then the Bitcoin hits its top or it hits a plateau and it starts to either drop down or people kind of lose interest in it or whatever. Then the money starts to come out of Bitcoin and goes into the next best thing. Well, what's the next best thing? Well, large cap consider be Ethereum. Well, what just happened with Ethereum? A ton of money went into Ethereum and the price of Ethereum went up. And then what happened? Well, a couple of things. Bitcoin dominance, Ethereum kind of hit a plateau, temporary plateau. A lot of different things happened. So people say, well, where, where can we put our money now and make a bunch of money? And they pu start pulling money out of Ethereum and Bitcoin and putting it into some of the, you know, mid cap. Uh, they're called mid cap, but I just call them altcoins in general. Um, the more popular ones like EOS or Card Cardano or Dash or Zcash or or any of Dogecoin. <laughs> but um, they put those, they put their money in there, expecting the big returns. Why? Because in a cycle, which market cycles repeat themselves typically and historically, looking back at 2017, these altcoins had spectacular gains, spectacular. So even getting in at this late in the game, there are, there's a lot of money to be made. And I had a conversation with one of my sons today with respect to this. You look at these, you look at these prices because I have exit prices for all of my altcoins. And I think this seems ridiculous. I can't imagine EOS going, going from $6 to $34. Well, all you have to do is go look at the chart from 2017 and you can see, yeah, that's what it did. So the percentage jumps that they, they've had in the past or the all-time highs, do you realize that that Bitcoin and Ethereum blew away their all-time highs? They, they surpassed them by a long shot. It wasn't even close. So if these altcoins do anything remotely in the same realm of possibilities, we're going to see massive gains. I would say that in conjunction with altcoins, people look for the low caps like SFI, SCC. I, I looked for as many as I could find, but these are the ones that are way down to like 5,000 on the list or something like that. They have market caps of $12 and things. But to really be honest with you, there are a lot of coins down there that can make you a lot of money if you hit the right one. It's a, it's a, game of chance, in my opinion, unless you have some sort of an in on what these projects are about and whether or not they're going to take off, but there's money to be made there as well. Once all the altcoins take off on their parabolic runs and everybody's making money, they all of a sudden just crash. And when they crash, 
they crash hard. We're not talking 20%. We're not talking 50%. We're talking 70, 80, 90%. So if you don't get out at the right time, you're left holding the bag until the next cycle. Don't sell it because that's not financial advice, but don't sell it because you won't, you won't have anything then. But the money comes out of those coins. And then of course the party's over. So where does that money go back into people's checking accounts and savings accounts, which is horrifyingly sad because there's so there's no money to be made in those fiat currency venues anymore. So I'm going to be putting mine back into the blue chip cryptos, which would be Bitcoin and Ethereum. Actually, I'm not selling any of my Ethereum, but I will be putting uh, some of my profits that I make from uh, the sales of my altcoins back into Ethereum. So now you kind of have an idea of what this cycle looks like in a visual manner. So let's just take a look at what we need to do now. If, if we, we have all this information, but what do we need to do? Well, this chart should look familiar because I just used it in a video, I think last week or sometime. And um, what it does is it shows Bitcoin dominance. But it, the reason why I'm showing this is because the Bitcoin dominance number is very closely related to that money, that crypto cycle. And I use it because it had this really cool chart available for it and it fits perfectly. So if you look at all these different scenarios between these three different pieces, Bitcoin dominance, which is the first column, BTC.D, uh, Bitcoin price and the altcoins, we can, we can have an association between the three of those in different scenarios to see what's happening. So I put a little blue arrow on where I think we are right now. And I would be interested to hear where you think we are. But right now we see Bitcoin dominance decreasing day by day. So that's a fact. We see that Bitcoin price has not only stabilized, it started to go back up. And what have we seen the altcoins doing? They're increasing very, very fast. So. Let's do a little recap and then I want to talk about a little bit of strategy too, because we're, we're seeing all these things start to happen. And so what are we going to do? We've already talked about exit plans. So we really need to focus on, on what we're going to do. Uh, let's recap uh, Bitcoin has started back to the, ch uh, up on the charts. We've talked about that. It's, it's working its way back up towards 60. Ethereum is taking a well-deserved break, just kind of hanging out around 35 or so. Uh, Bitcoin dominance has fallen well past 50 and it continues to drop. Uh, I've heard numbers as low as 32 to 27 percent. So uh, that's drastic, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, we looked into the flow of money in crypto and tried to understand what part of the cycle that we're in. And clearly we're moving from the Ethereum or the kind of like blue chips down into the altcoins now. We examined some of the different scenarios in the Bitcoin dominance chart to see, well, what's happening? What's the association between these things? And, and can we get any indication of where we're going? And we kind of ascertained where we're going. And um, we've concluded that altcoins have taken off. Now, it could go straight up from here. Most of them could go at different intervals, or we could see a retracement back. Sometimes we'll have a really big retracement back and then a huge jump forward. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. I, I don't think that that's going to happen, but I don't know. But the thing that I really wanted to touch on here with importance is that when the altcoins do start going up, this isn't a typically a long cycle. In fact, I went back and, and calculated how many days they typically last. And my guess is for this time around, we're going to be in it between maybe a month to a month and a half or so, just depending upon what's happening. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it ended sooner and I would be kind of surprised if it, if it lasted longer, like into June or something like that. Um, but we have to have our exit strategies in place and ready to go because when people start FOMOing in at the top and the money's pouring in and the, and the prices just keep going up, you can't just sit there and, and say, I'm waiting until it goes up a little more. I'm waiting until it goes up a little more. Wait till, and then it starts on its way down. Oh, it's going to stop and turn around. Oh, it's going to stop and turn around. No, 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 no. When it starts going down, it's going down. And you better have already taken your profits out. So my philosophy is, and again, this isn't financial advice, but 
take profits along the way. If you got in really early, take them sooner. Take a few here, take a few there, take a few there until you get to the top. Always have your target price in place. And I always have my sell orders in. So if I have XRP, well, I can't do XRP because it's on uphold and you can't do that. But let's use EOS, for example. <clears throat> if I have EOS, I put my sell price in at $64. I'm going to sell 65%. Well, if I'm asleep, it's three o'clock in the morning and it hits that price, it's going to sell. And then I wake up in the morning, it's $1. But I, I go, oh my gosh, it sold it at $64. I've, I still made my money. So I'm protecting myself. I don't use stop losses because if you use a stop loss, you could get wicked out immediately. You should just really try to pay attention to what's happening as much as possible, but have a plan. Don't wait. Don't get emotional about it. Be Mr. Spock from Star Trek. No emotion at all. You just have to be logical. You just have to have a plan and you have to stick to it. A dollar in the, in the bank, not in the bank, but a dollar back in, in Bitcoin is worth a lot more than zero. So be smart about how you exit and how you, you look at the market going forward. And leave a comment below and let me know where you think we are. And I'd be really interested to know how long you feel that this particular alt season is going to last because this has been a subject of the debate for a long time for a number of reasons. And I, I'm, I'm talking about Fibonacci retracements and historical tracing and then the impacts of recent events on the crypto market is because it's all different things are are changing so i really love to hear what your perspective may be look out for the scammers they're everywhere looking for your personal information and steal whatever the heck they can from you uh, be ever vigilant and of course last but not least winners never quit and quitters they never win always give your very best effort to overcome the challenges that you face in life. I hope you had a great day. I had a great day and I will see you tomorrow.